we are going to solve a problem based on a reverted epicyclic gear train. Okay, let me solve the problem now. In a reverted epicyclic gear train, the arm A carries two gears B and C and the carbon gear D E. So here the diagram is there. So there is a reverted gear train that means two gears will be in compound gears and remaining two gears will be separated and aligned coaxially. So here the gears B and C are separated gears that are aligned coaxially in different shafts. But the gears E and D, those are mounted in single shaft. So this E and D gear is a compound gear. The gear B meshes with E and C meshes with D. So gear B is meshing with E and C is meshing with D. So when we give input to one gear, that particular gear will be rotating the compound gear and based on the compound rotating, that will be rotating the output gear. So this is the function of reverted gear train. The number of teeth of gears B, C, D are 75, 30, 90 respectively. So gear B, C, D number of teeth is given. For E, the number of teeth is unknown. Find the speed and direction of gear C when gear B is fixed and arm makes 100 rpm clockwise. Okay, so here is the epicyclic gear train, which one is reverted. So the given data are two gears B and C are coaxial gears. Those are separately mounted with different shafts. And E and D gears are aligned in single shafts. So these are compound gears. And number of teeth for B, C, D are given. So we have to calculate the number of teeth of gear E. And after that, for the given condition, gear B is fixed and arm rotates 100 rpm clockwise. We have to calculate the speed of gear C. So NC we are going to calculate based on the condition. So what we are going to do in the particular problem is, first thing we have to use the diagram to calculate number of teeth of E. And then we have to formulate the tabular column to calculate the speeds equations. And after that, using the speeds equations, we are going to calculate the unknown speed for the given condition. Okay, let me solve the diagram and to calculate the number of teeth of gear E. Here is the diagram. So here, particularly in a reverted gear train, we can say that the center distance between the gears are same for the meshing of two gears. So here gear B and E are meshing, C and D are meshing. So when we take a radius equation, this one is radius of gear B and this one is radius of gear E. And similarly, this one is radius of gear C and this one is radius of gear D. And by seeing that the summation of radius of B and E is equal to summation of radius of C and D. So we can form the equation, right? So B and E summation is equal to C and D summation. So RC plus RD is equal to RB plus RE. So from the given diagram of reverted gear train, we have to formulate by using the radius. And after that, the diameter and number of teeth of the gears are directly proportional. So we can formulate the equation in terms of number of teeth. So instead of R, we have to put T for all the rotations. So now TC plus TD is equal to TB plus TE. By substituting the given value, we can calculate the unknown teeth E. So TC, which is given in the problem is 30. And then TT, which is given as 90 number of teeth. And TB will be 75. So then we have to calculate the TE. So TE is equal to 30 plus 90 minus 75. So the value is 45. So number of teeth of gear E is equal to 45. Okay. Once the number of gears of uh, number of teeth of all the gears are calculated or known, we can formulate the tabular column. So here the tabular column and the given conditions. So here the given condition will be always 
arm will be fixed then any one gear will be rotating for one revolution counter clockwise direction then condition number 2 arm fixed the same gear will be rotated for x revolution anti clockwise and we have to give the speed for arm and we have to total the speed values so here we can see that d and e are mounted in single shaft b and c are mounted in separate shafts so any one gear we have to rotate for one revolution and based on the rotation how other gears are rotating that's what we have to formulate in the table column so let me rotate the compound gear then that will be make the entire table column more easy we can rotate any gear either c or b we can rotate any gear but if you rotate compound gear in reverted gear train the table column will be more comfortable to calculate so let me make the compound gear d and e will be rotating for one revolution so based on that how other gears are rotating so okay let me give the relation so first of all b and c are separated gears d and e are compound gears that means nb and nc those are different speeds but nd is equal to ne because d and e will be mounted on a single shaft so the speed will be same so we can form a single column for nd and ne so while formulating the table column so first column will be having the condition and second one we have to formulate the speed of arm and third column will be the gear which we are going to rotate for one revolution we are going to rotate the compound gear so next thing we have to put the compound gear and after that one by one compound gear d is meshing with c and compound gear e is meshing with b so here next one b and after that c we have to formulate the column one by one based on the gear arrangement okay fine so let me fill the column and before that we have to assume the same directional rotation we have to give positive and opposite directional rotation we have to give negative and especially for clockwise direction negative anti clockwise direction positive that will be the assumption we are going to take okay let me fill the table column now so first of all what we are going to do is we are going to do that compound gear will be rotated for one revolution and based on that how other gears are rotating that's what we are going to make so the assumption is the first thing the arm is fixed so speed of arm n a is equal to 0 arm is fixed so speed will be 0 and the compound gear will be rotated for one revolution so speed of the compound gear n d and a e n e is equal to 1 and then we have to calculate the speed of gear b and speed of gear c based on the one rotation of the compound gear so that is calculated from the speed ratio and we know that gear d is meshing with gear c and gear e is meshing with gear b so first thing we have to calculate speed of b so n b by n e speed ratio for b and e is equal to t e by t b speed and number of teeth are inversely proportional so we have to make that nb by ne is equal to te by tb so nb is equal to te by tb into ne so that's it that's what we are going to put here speed of b is equal to te by tb into ne that is equal to te by tb the ne value plus 1 so plus 1 that's it similarly we are going to calculate for speed c d and c gears are missing so using the d and c meshing speed of c divided by speed of d is equal to number of teeth of d divided by number of teeth of c so now nc is equal to td by tc into nd so we can put here td by tc into nd so nd value again plus 1 nd and ne both are same 
so that is equal to td by tc the plus 1 that's it the first column is over and after that based on our assumption so what our assumption is same directional rotation we have to put positive and opposite directional rotation we have to put negative so for what we are going to compare is for the given rotation how other gears are rotating so here we know that the driving gear we rotate the compound gear which is driving anti clockwise direction so if we rotate anti clockwise direction d and e b and c will be rotating in clockwise direction so gear b will be rotating in clockwise and gear c will be rotating in clockwise direction so comparatively compound gear compound gear and gear b having opposite direction relation this one is anti clockwise this one is clockwise and similarly comparatively the compound gear gear c having opposite directional rotation this one is anti clockwise this one is clockwise so how many gear may be in the tabular column we have to compare the direction of those gears with the initial gear that that's what we are going to rotate right so initial gear which we make one revolution we have to compare with that so all other gears should be compared with the first gear that's we are rotating and the direction if the direction is same then we have to put positive if direction is not same we have to put negative so here comparatively the compound gear gear b and c both are rotating in opposite direction so we have to put negative symbol for that so negative and negative that's it the first row is over remaining will be normal so when we fill the remaining one the condition to arm fixed zero gear d e is rotating for plus x revolution so instead of 1 we have to put x so t e by t b instead of 1 we have to put x and similarly minus t d by t c instead of 1 we have to put x that's it and we have to add y for all the rotations we have to give the arm with the speed of y and do the summation 0 plus y is y and then x plus y then y minus x into t by t b then y minus t d by t c x so while summation while do the summation we have to add the column sorry row number 2 and 3 not the first the first one is the ideal case if we rotate for one revolution how other gears are other other gears are rotating but actually the gear will be having number of revolutions so we have to add the rows 2 and 3 not 1 so by adding row 2 and 3 we have calculated the total speed equations and by using the equations we have to do the calculation to solve the problem so here the speed calculation for the given condition in calculation we have to assume that the anti clockwise direction is positive and clockwise direction is negative why because initially we have rotated the gear in anti clockwise direction so always take anti clockwise positive if we consider clockwise direction then you can go for clockwise positive but in the problem that is more convenient and if we rotate the first gear in anti clockwise direction that is positive so we have to assume that in calculation anti clockwise is positive and clockwise is negative fine so here is a given condition so from the given condition we can say that gear b is fixed so speed of b is equal to 0 and the arm rotates at 100 rpm clockwise arm nf so speed of arm is equal to 100 rpm which is clockwise direction clockwise means negative so we have to put minus here fine so from the table column we have to take the speed equation so gear b y minus x into t by db for arm it is y fine so nb is equal to from the table column nb is equal to y minus x into t e by t b which is equal to 0 and n f speed of arm from the table column that is y and which is minus 100 rpm 
Okay, now the given condition is substituted with the equation formulated in the table column. And by resolving the equation, by substituting y value here, minus 100 minus x, number of teeth of gear E, 45, number of teeth of gear B, that is 75, which is equal to 0. Then minus x, by simplifying that, that is 0.6, which is equal to plus 100. So the x value will be minus 166.67. That's it. Now we know the y value and x value. By substituting the equation for gear C, what we have to calculate is, we have to calculate speed of gear C. So gear C equation is y minus td by tc into x. So in the equation, we have to substitute the x value and y value, then we can calculate the speed. So the equation from the table column for gear C is equal to y minus x into td by tc. y value minus 100 minus x value minus 166.67 and then td by tc value td number of teeth of d is equal to 90 number of teeth of c is equal to 30. So by resolving that minus 100 and minus into minus plus 166.67 90 by 30. So by calculating that the speed of gear C is equal to 400 rpm. The answer comes in positive. So the answer comes in positive. So the direction of gear C is anticlockwise. That's it. So this is how we can calculate the unknown speed value in the gear train by using the table column method. Thank you.